When predicting the future of labor, I'm from the hustler school of thought. That as computers and automation begin to eat away at the foundation on which many conventional industries were built, it's the entrepreneurs, those who hustle to create for themselves, that are on the upward trajectory. It's these entrepreneurial paths that will ultimately reign supreme. And through the course of my travels, one unexpected but really interesting side benefit is seeing the various ways that destinations and their residents seem to be dealing with the shared economy. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? You're not Natasha. I am not, I'm Cameron. <laughs> nice to meet you, Matt. Hey, nice to meet you. Yeah. My vacation rental came with an in-person check-in. Luke and Cameron were two young San Diegans, both of whom knew the property and their city inside and out. Over welcome beer, Luke invited us to the farmer's market that weekend to see his recycled art display. And Cam gave us a little flyer for his bonfire business. What's the big secret to being the best? Um, communication, respect, and just attention to detail. Amen to that. Yeah. And I'd say putting the customer first and listening to the And who's back. the customer, the traveler or the owner? The guest primarily. And then and the owner. We tell the owners that if we keep the, the guests happy, you guys will be happy. It's a good way of looking at it. Keep the guests happy, they'll, they'll keep coming back because they feel appreciated, they yeah. feel like they're getting their value. Enter San Diego. It's not New York, it's not San Francisco, it's not Austin. And yet it was here that I met more young, enthusiastic entrepreneurs doing real, meaningful work. Above all else, San Diego's young entrepreneurs weren't wasting their time obsessing over the things they couldn't control. They were identifying niches, getting to work, making money, and enjoying the process. Getting introduced wasn't done through a guidebook, nor any extensive Google research, but rather a vacation rental company called Blue Water Vacation Homes, which represents about 70 luxury homes up and down the San Diego coast. Little did I know that the moment I booked a Blue Water rental, I'd gain access to way more than just a property. I'd be entering a lifestyle. The term vacation rental can mean a lot of things, but at the very core, it's a movement unlocking a whole new way to travel. For years, I've immersed myself in the community of people leading this movement. And I'd like to share with you their stories as we rediscover hospitality on a whole new level. My name is Matt Landau, and this is A Sense of Place. Whoa! Hey <laughs> Are you my new children? Because I've spent most of my adult life living abroad, time with my mom is always precious. <laughs> Remember, you're on a but show you now. have this gigantic car. We I know. Get this, like, huge so we got all the gear. You got all the gear? Oh, you have all the gear. It looks like a rehearse. Uh, yeah. Despite the fact that my mom's a cognitive scientist, we don't do anything too intellectual when we're together. More often, we sit around, chat, cook, call other members of our family, gossip. And when I suggested we go to San Diego together for the week, she was game. Sunset on the Bay is an iconic four-bedroom vacation rental with a great big kitchen and tons of living space. Blue Water manages this property for Jeannie Bender, an intriguing owner who earned international prestige writing a children's book series called Lindy Lou. Honoring the personality of an owner in a professionally managed property requires a fine balance individualize too much and the variables make your job too complicated, but sterilize too much and you essentially become a chain hotel. Striking that balance seems to be something that Blue Water does really well. One of the more courageous characteristics of vacation rental professionals for me is their willingness to open up and welcome virtual strangers into their personal corners of the world. For Paul Becker, the owner of Blue Water, life has never precisely gone as planned. I started in the uh, bedroom above my garage is where we started it. So oh, cool. we were there for about the first four years. Coming off of a divorce and a collapsed economy and a bout with cancer, Paul found his professional calling in vacation rentals. I said all the time, you can have all my secrets, but execution is it's tough. I learned a long time ago, getting the money is not as important as having the quality of life for your business and your staff. 
I don't feel that you can offer what we're talking about unless you have staff that are vested in what they're doing yeah. and local that understand the community. Brady, Paul's communication director, would be a key element of our trip. Along with their team of 14, Blue Water is on track to curate the top 100 of San Diego's most illustrious short-term rental properties. I got a deeper view into all this when Paul invited me to go surfing with him and his son Jackson. This is Paul's son and apparently one of the most promising surfers in San Diego, is that right? I don't know. That was right I read in the newspaper this morning. <laughs> Between waves in La Jolla, Paul shared with me some of his secrets to success. Simple yet often overlooked things that any small business should remember. Things like putting the client first, staying proactive as opposed to reactive, and doubling down on good employees. Interpersonal relationships are clearly an important element of Paul's leadership style. Observing how proud he was of his son and his team and the people that he surrounds himself with really underlined the personal side of Paul's life for me. It's something consistent throughout pretty much everything that he does. The most advanced vacation rental businesses use dynamic pricing, much like hotels. In charge of this for Blue Water is Zyra, who, lucky for us, is also a serious foodie. So when casually asking about a place for lunch, she recommended Oscars. Oscars? A local hole-in-the-wall taco restaurant just a few blocks down from the Blue Water office. Zyra recommended we get the seafood tacos, which had smoked tuna, scallops, and shrimp and it was one of the most unexpected yet delicious tacos I've eaten in my entire life. The snozzberry tastes like snozzberry. We then wandered with Zyra over to Liberty Station, a former naval base, which now plays home to a bustling network of shops and restaurants. It was here that I satisfied my newfound pokey addiction, straight from Kauai, with some nitrogen coffee from the tap and a glass of delicious local craft beer. My mom loves coffee. She drinks a carefully crafted cappuccino every morning without fail. And when we travel, she's always quick to make a point and go and buy from a local roaster as opposed to some of the big brands. When we mentioned this to Brady, we learned that her husband, Ryan, was just our guy. Together with his business partner, Patrick, the two run Common Good, a fair trade coffee roastery whose mission is to make good coffee common to the average Joe. Our commodity is coffee, coffee beans, but what we're selling is like a feeling and experience, especially with coffee, it's such like a ritual. And I think uh, the balance for us is how do we keep growing, but keep that story? And how do we keep that connection? That feels like the, like the vital struggle to keep the soul of your company and grow. Mom and I visited Common Goods Warehouse, which was located in an area called La Mesa which, between auto yards and water treatment plants, seems to have an unusual amount of craft companies popping up left and right. Ryan and Patrick take great care in every bag of coffee they produce, not just selecting the right farms and supporting the right practices, but roasting each and every bean with scientific precision. Common Good also formed a partnership with Blue Water Vacation Homes by roasting a custom blend and creating these cool collaborative labels. This struck me as an innovative way forward for entrepreneurs alike. Almost any vacation rental business could forge this kind of partnership if they thought long enough about it. The next day, Mom and I booked a day trip to Mexico. It's not the first thing that comes to mind when visiting San Diego. And frankly, Mom was a little skeptical of the idea. So we probably wouldn't have gone if it were not for Brady's encouragement. But seeing as the Mexican wine industry seems to be burgeoning and that the border was only a short 20 minutes from our rental, we connected with one of Blue Water's mainstays, Mariana. Hi. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you guys. <laughs> who drove us over the border into Mexico, then towards two up and coming wine vineyards in her hometown, Ensenada. You see, wine is not something that Mexico is really known for yeah. until recently. Okay. We've been mostly known for our beers. Mm -hmm and for our tequilas. Yes. But the beer And mezcal. Mezcal, oh, very good. I love mezcal. mezcal. Can we do taste a Yes. Okay. Adventuring with a local always feels a little bit more reassuring. And since wine connoisseurs seem to agree that Mexico is on the up and up, we loved hearing the aspirational storylines behind each brand 
and the growth that each of them were going through. As you see, there's a lot of like structures, but like 10, 15 years ago, there was, there nothing. was nothing. Really? Yeah. So all these houses are from the last 10 years? Yeah. Cool. Well, most of them, like there's some places that have a little bit more time. Uh -huh. But like most of the wineries here have less than 20 years. Everything was less expensive in Mexico. Tastings cost around $5 per person. And the bottles, six of which we purchased for our final dinner, ran about $10 a piece. En route, Mariana was able to answer every inquisitive question we threw her way. She brought us to a sleepy little seaside village called Puerto Nuevo, where, atop these simple plastic tables and miniaturized margaritas, Mom and I indulged in what was easily one of the best meals of our lives. Fresh lobster tacos with rice, beans, and these flour tortillas that were made there right on the spot. I've never seen a tortilla like this. <laughs> There's no real technique to it, but you just separate the whole thing off. And we need to do the beans and rice. You gotta follow. See, she's and, and, and then put the lobster inside with the beans it's and rice. It's however way you want. I yes. want to do it right. I'm not big with rice. Well, you're going right. You're going way ahead of Maria. No, I know I am, but I'm now I'm right all of a sudden when I see this, I'm really hungry. <laughs> this is <laughs> delicious. I've never seen my mom eat that much food. Oops, what am I doing here? The total, for the two of us, was $32. It was the kind of mythical foodie encounter that you always hear about, but you never actually get to experience. Yes! <laughs> San Diegans are known for their affinity for craft beer. And as opposed to visiting the obvious waterfront brew pubs that dotted the Ocean Beach boardwalk, Brady connected my mom and I with her friend Oz, a young IT professional who ushered us back to La Mesa for an evening of beer tasting at a local brewery called Helix. Brady is, um, her role is gonna sound very simple at the company that she basically runs on her back. Oh, no, 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 it's, no, no, no. It's, it's um, Blue Water, the place we're oh, staying. Oh, you run Blue Water? Brady no, and, you and do Paul. not run Blue Water. You're among the I most important the pieces of the puzzle. Agree or disagree? Agree. I'm one of the most invested. Beyond the varying textures, flavors, and styles of Helix beer, we became most intrigued by Oz's secret beer club. Yeah, this is very much an after work at home. I would or... say it's more like your second job, <laughs> though. <laughs> he, which I never, I didn't know that you could do this until I met Oz, but he buys the majority of his really good beer on Instagram. So he's like trading beer. He's saying like, oh, I really want what you have. I'll give you two of these for that. And it so, is complex. So it'll be, it'll be, um, it's like a beer currency? Yes. Almost correct. So like, you, I'll, let's say that, that um, so like I said, San Diego has so many small breweries. Yeah. And they make so many small batch beers that, you know, they'll say, hey, we're going to release 500 bottles of this limited edition. very limited edition beer. And so the, the idea behind it is to, for it to stay local. But there may be someone very similar like me in New York, and they're keeping a tab on Modern Times and or, or, or Alesmith or Lost Abbey or Helix, what they're brewing. And they'll say, wow, I really want to try that beer. Yeah. Valuable beer barters take place on a daily basis. How does the transfer work? You might ask, Oz stayed vague and sphinx-like. What do we want first, tuna, scallop, shrimp, or beef? Before leaving San Diego, my mom and I wanted to host a dinner at our vacation rental to commemorate the real San Diego experience and the honest hustlers who made it possible. We'd serve wine from the Mexico vineyard, beer from Helix, and produce from the local farmer's market, as well as seafood from the most insane fish market that we simply discovered through Yelp. We even hired Cam to set up a beautiful bonfire, complete with Adirondack chairs, blankets, and s'mores. And while I don't pretend to know the right or wrong way to usher in the shared economy, it's clear that even in the most contentious of cities, an overarching theme of entrepreneurship, of working for yourself and doing what you love, is unanimously on the rise. As a way to thank Paul and Brady for being that hub, I gifted them a high-definition Logitech webcam, something they could install in their office to communicate all their great personalities with prospective guests. 
These personalities had opened up a different side of San Diego for my mom and me. It wasn't the side we'd read about on any airplane magazines, but it felt distinctly real and unadorned, something we felt honored to be a part of. Thanks to Blue Water, San Diego's sense of freedom and independence were shared with its visitors too.